What if I were to say to you that Napoleon Bonaparte and the Irish are intrinsically linked? Would you believe me? Oh yes. The significant connections between Napoleon Bonaparte and the Irish are shared through their common causes and because of the Irish involvement in the coalition wars, which include the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars. In fact, the Irish fought with the French for quite a long time. Napoleon Bonaparte himself had meetings with Wolfe Tone in and around the time of the rebellions of the late 18th century. The French army would have assisted with these rebellions, climaxing in the 1798 rebellion. Unfortunately, the Irish weren't successful in defeating the British Empire, who had taken over the whole of Ireland at that point. Hence why the French were getting involved, because they had their own beef with the British Empire. Their involvement with us at that time, hugely significant because this rebellion, although we didn't win for us as a nation, and it lives on the public consciousness to this day because of its leader, Wolf Tone, being a part of the French army himself. This connection is not really talked about massively, but it is a huge thing. We even had our own Irish regiment or Irish legion, the La Légion Hollandaise. This was approved by Napoleon Bonaparte in 1803 as an actual Irish legion in the French Revolutionary Army. And this army would have had assisted in the Napoleonic Wars over the next 10 years or so. Right up until the time really that Napoleon was defeated. French politics hugely influenced the Irish. The French Revolution inspired our own revolution against the British and Ireland's involvement with the coalition wars included the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars further underscores the island's strategic importance during this period. Even three Irish soldiers were honoured with the highest French military grade for their bravery at a battle within Spain. This really shows the dedication of the Irish to the French Revolution. This influenced us in our own Irish Revolution. The Irish regiment, the Irish legion, even had its own uniform in Napoleon's Napoleonic Wars, which was quite cool, to be honest. The thing is, as well, that people don't realise is that Napoleon would have had similar tactics to some of our own Irish battles and Irish army generals back in the day, especially the one at the Siege of Clanmel, where we had a hugely significant victory over Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell, during the Cromwellian conquest of Ireland. At Clonmel, the town's defenders, led by Hugh Dove O'Neill, anticipated Cromwell's tactics. Knowing that Cromwell would attempt to breach the walls and rush into the city, O'Neill constructed a redoubt V-shape behind the expected breach point. When Cromwell's forces broke through the walls, they were trapped in the killing zone and suffered heavy casualties. Cromwell's forces were repelled and he was forced to lift the siege, Hugh O'Neill survived, and this was a huge turning point because they lost about two and a half thousand uh, warriors, Cromwell did, and he was gone out of the country a couple of years later, thank God. You know, so fair play to Hugh O'Neill that time. This strategy of, you know, feigning kind of weakness and leading uh, the army or leading the enemy into a choking point is something that Napoleon Bonaparte did himself and especially at Austerlitz. Napoleon Bonaparte was known for his innovative tactics and strategies. One of the tactics that bears some resemblance to the Clan Mel defense is Napoleon's use of the central position. This was at Austerlitz in Austria. In this tactic, Napoleon would position his forces to quickly respond and counter multiply enemy forces approaching from different directions. By doing so, he could engage and defeat these forces in detail, one after the other, rather than facing them all at once. This proved to be very effective at this particular battle. You see, Napoleon deliberately weakened his right flank enticing the enemy to attack it and when they did he counter-attacked and laid them to waste very like the siege of clan mel when we attracted them into a choking point and they were killed and slaughtered the similarity here really is just coaxing the enemy into a false sense of security or superiority and then defeating them and brian brew did this at the battle of clontarf where he basically retreated ever so slightly uh, in the Valley of the Tolka, 
leading the Viking invaders in and after a while the tide came in behind them, cut them off from their boats and then the, the gale just led the slaughter, killed literally every one of them bar a couple. And lastly, the big connection between the Irish and Napoleon himself is true uh, really uh, a person that maybe nobody has ever heard of and kind of not really hugely heroic character or anything like that nothing to do with military or anything it was actually an Irish doctor Dr. Barry O'Mara who basically went with Napoleon to St. Helena during his exile as Emperor of the French what happened here is Napoleon's personal physician wouldn't go with him you know, Napoleon was going through a kind of a very difficult period of his life towards the end and was really exiled as such, as I said. And Dr. Barry O'Mara stood up and Napoleon was just really taken back by this and he, he wanted him to come to the island and they, he did and he stayed there for three years. They developed a very close bond and in, in essence, potentially Dr. Barry O'Mara was a huge factor in bringing Napoleon's legacy to the world in a, such a way through a book that was written later by a guy called Hubert O'Connor. But to go back a bit, Napoleon developed such a close bond with Dr. Barry O'Mara and I guess maybe he was thinking he was coming closer to the end of his life. So he suggested that the doctor keep notes and uh, you know talk you know write about their interactions you know they were having obviously long discussions on this island and you know Napoleon would have revealed a lot about his personal life his relationships and stuff but also Dr. Barry O'Mara was a mediator between the island's governor and himself so they he was like a peacemaker Napoleon was probably very difficult you know and you know he was an emperor like and it's just amazing that this huge gigantic egoic figure that achieved so much really befriend, befriended this this Irish doctor and they the, this this doctor was a huge factor in Napoleon's legacy coming to light later on and this book Napoleon's Doctor the Saint Helena Diary of Dr. Barry O'Mara authored by Dr. Hubert O'Connor and this book offers a captivating glimpse into Napoleon's personal life and his relationships at the time as seen through the eyes of the trusted physician. The diary not only chronicles the medical care provided by Dr. O'Mara but also captures the personal moments and conversation between the two men. The publication of this diary has contributed significantly to the understanding of Napoleon's final years and his relationship with those around him huge massive you know the Irish are so connected to the French something that we really don't explore and it is something that we should explore a lot more actually because the French are hugely significant in our history and also we are hugely significant in French history Napoleon Bonaparte the emperor of the French connected to the Irish would you believe me oh yes